Hey there guys, Carl Events here, Kennedy Event Manager for the GM Nationals. We're here with Brian with uh, Supercar Workshop in the Solid Lifter Showroom. Great collection of Copos, Yankos, and just awesome cars in general. We're going to have Brian take us there for a tour through the building, check out some of the stuff, and talk to some of the owners. Okay, uh, this is our 14th year here at Carlisle Events, and uh, happy to say uh, we have a great relationship with Carlisle, and uh, so this will be a little tour of what we brought this year. Uh, guys have came as far away from North Carolina and Canada to be part of our display, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's really cool. And uh, yeah, especially with the prices of everything. <laughs> Yeah. This year, but uh, so we're going to start out and we're going to talk to Mike over here who has an interesting story on his 68Z28. So let's take a quick look at this red 68Z28. All right, Mike, you're up here, buddy. You're up. So. Okay, so this 68 Camaro I've owned for 45 years. It was my wife's first car when she was 15 years old. Uh, frame up restoration in 1985. Raced it for many years. Um, in 2016, I put a little motor in it, made it street legal. I took it to the track for a test and tune, and on the way home, a drunk driver T-boned my enclosed trailer, totaled the car. So after many years, lots of hours, this is its first show here today at Carlisle. I just got it done, I drove it in and out of the shop, and here it is, 1968 Z28. It's a clone, I built it from a six-cylinder car, and I made it the way I wanted it. Power windows, tilt wheel, uh, hideaway headlights, a racing suspension underneath the car, and um, it, what can I say? Its name is Big Red, and uh, uh, I'm glad to be here today uh, to show everybody the, the original Big Red Camaro. Cool. All right, right over here. How's it going? Uh, all the way from North Carolina. Uh, Scott brought up his 1972 Baldwin Motion Camaro. Uh, Baldwin Motion rated this at 550 horsepower. And the fiberglass hood, all the engine upgrades, the Kregger side exhaust, all that, and the special uh, motion paint scheme was part of it. And uh, we're really glad to have him here. It's, he said it was always one of his goals to be able to come to Carlisle and show the car off, and uh, this is the year he made it happen. So. This is one of the only maybe second or third motion car we've had here because they didn't make that many and there's not that many out there anymore, but it's really good to have this one here. And uh, I think people are really enjoying this one. You just don't see this every day. Well, and it's a 72, 72. Which, is, yeah. which is a tough Before year. The end, of the, the end of the run kind of cars. When the big government starts stepping in and saying, you can't do this anymore. Yeah. So. It's a unique piece, and we're really glad that he came all the way from the North Carolina area to bring this up for us. So that was, it's kind of a treat to see that. And right beside him, we have another unusual car. It's a 1970 Yanko Deuce, owned by my good friend Joe here. Um, Joe bought this car a few years ago, and he had just had it back from Supercar Workshop. We did some uh, freshen up things that he wanted to get done to the car. A uh, few restoration mistakes were made early on when the car was restored a long time ago, minor stuff. Kind of went through the car, fixed all that stuff for him, and uh, he's here today to, to show off the car. It's a beautiful forest green, four speed, and uh, it's uh, really a really a great representative of what the Yanko Deuces were. A legitimate car, uh, all original sheet metal car, it's uh, considered one of the better ones, maybe one of the best as far as being no rust issues or anything like that. And Joey's here. If he wants to say a word about his car, we can uh, talk to Joe a little bit about it. Joe, what do you like to say about your car here today? Uh, Brian from the Supercar Workshop, him and uh, Joe had done some work on the car. I just picked it up about a month ago. And uh, these guys' work is like second to none. And uh, all the little stuff. Pulled the motor out, the transmission, we made everything right, and uh, went to the body shop, redid the trunk, which wasn't done properly when the car was restored. But now everything that was missing or wasn't correct is where it should be from the way it was 1970 when it left uh, the Yanko dealership. Do you know uh, what number car of whereabouts uh, this one? YS25, uh, it's an 05D car, built the fifth week of May. Build date was June 1st. Awesome and uh, came out of Nankaville Chevrolet in Indiana. 
cool. thing about Yanko was they had a dealer network, so you the cars would generate for the most part in Cannonsburg and then would be taken and, and distributed throughout the country through their network called Span Incorporated. So the big dealerships like Colonial, you know, they would get big piles of cars, or some of the smaller dealerships, they would sell a single car, two cars, so they had a lot of dealers in their network. That's why you'll see these cars like this one sold at Nankoville, but it was a Yanko Camaro, so it, it, or, it originated in Cannesburg and was transported out there and then sold there as a new car. The nice thing about it, if you do, if you if you get NCRS paperwork, if you don't have paperwork in a car, you usually will say the car generated at Yanko Chevrolet. So that's uh, that's a big plus. Yeah, and you guys at Supercar Workshop aren't far from there at all. No, so. we're very close, within an hour. Yeah, so we've been down there many times. Did many little events down in that area. So yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a it's a building that should be taken care of and, and properly restored and almost historical. Yeah, so and unfortunately it's not. Yeah. Are going. yeah, they're going, and this thing still looks kind of the part. Yeah. So there's been so many talks about that happening over the years. So we'll see. Somebody with some deep talk gets to probably step up and hopefully, so hopefully, it would be a nice destination. For, yeah. For a lot of people, I think would enjoy it. Yep. So well, let's continue and check All out right. a couple others. So. All right. Thank you, Joe. Now we got a. <laughs> We got another car here from Canada today. This is, is Fred Cini's car out of Canada. It's actually its first time shown. Uh, the guys at uh, Supercar Restoration, they're our right-hand guys that do our paint and body work. Uh, just finished this car for Rick Nelson's restorations. And uh, they were kind enough to bring it here. It's an LS6 convertible. It's silver with a red interior, which is uh, kind of really classy looking car. And uh, Fred was kind enough to uh, let them bring it here today. Fred hasn't even seen the car done, so everybody on this show today is going to see the car before Fred sees it. Nice. But uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful car and uh, very correct. And like I said, there's not many LS6 convertibles ever built, so you know we got one right in front of us. So yeah, and this one was just getting finished up because I remember you sent me shots without I mean, the front it, end on it. It was so. probably uh, basically finished in the trailer, as we like to say. Yeah. And uh, they tell me when they when we get back from the show, they'll probably have another week or so of tinkering to you know, there's, just to take, get it perfect, get it, yeah. get it right. Just a little thing here and there that they'll have to improve on. But I mean, it'd be hard to find the flaw. But yeah, you know, when you build them, you know where they are. At. Well, and it's LS6 convertible, so right. Yeah, that's... they've made very few of these, and uh, so have the opportunity this may be the first time we've actually had an ls6 convertible and we've had ls6s before but i don't believe we've had a convertible in 15, 14 years so uh, awesome super neat car and uh really glad he was able to uh, show it here first time cool and uh that's the thing about this show it it, it generates a lot of guys that want to bring their car here and show it for the first time carlisle's a signature event in my opinion yeah for sure and, for sure. Uh, and we appreciate hearing yeah. that so so yeah and uh so there's a lot of guys that i want to have my car for carlisle can we have it ready for carlisle can i take it from carlisle which brings us to our next car which is exactly what the owner said absolutely we have yep. this car first time he's seen it is today as well that's awesome and uh this is a uh, this is tim's right this is tim shell yep and tim owns this car and the black one right beside it he was kind enough to bring it down from queensville ontario no matter what the sign says the sign's all messed up for where it came from but this car here we heard about at this actual show about three years ago and tim has the only red on red zl1 and i said hey we found a Z uh, copo red on red he says well let's go get it so Pretty much that's what happened. We went down to get it. And uh, the car is a, it has the Yanko sports car package. It's a 9737 Copa. It has the big sway bar, the 140 Speedo, and all that. And it was kind of a stock car, but it was raced when it was brand, brand new. And um, the original idea was we're going to take this car and make it bone stock, get rid of the cage, get rid of the small tub in the back, and then make it stock. Now, my original intentions was to have the two. Get closer. Twins. Get closer to them. Side by side together. Like I wanted, when I bought this car, it's like, you've got to have the twin side by side. And that's the thing. Originally, when I bought the car, it was going back to bone stock, right? And mm -hmm. so, so I get a phone call one day from a guy that I know named Eddie, and he says, Hey, I got this Booth Aaron's backed up pro stock motor. You know anybody? I go, Yeah, I got a guy. So I call Tim, he goes, No, I don't want that. That's, nah, I'm not interested in that. About three weeks later, I get a call from the Eddie. He goes, you're going to be home on Tuesday. I'm like, yeah. He goes, I'm dropping off this Pro Stock motor. I'm like, uh-oh. Yeah. Tim has a change of heart. Yeah. yeah. 
he says, you know, this thing's been a race car its entire life. I have a bunch of Copas. They're all stock restored. Yeah. He said, let's just, let's just keep it what it was. Yeah. And, and exactly. truth be told, most of these Copas did turn into these cars. They were basically a thinly disguised factory race car. Chevrolet wasn't really supposed to sell them, but, you know, you well, opened the door. Yeah. yeah, and got those things rolling. And uh, this thing, like I said, with the red on red, and it has 64 miles. So when, when we get around to look inside, you can see that 140 Speedo that is only rolled over to 64 miles. Let's go check it out. Yeah. Drag car its whole life. Basically, yeah. Well, you, you, you'll get behind there. And another thing, like the rarity of this car, like there was only one ZL1 in red, red built. And they claimed there was about four to five red red l72 copo cars built but this is the only 9737 red red known copo camaro which is the the yanko, yanko sports, car, sports car conversion yeah yeah so uh tim did it did it right i mean we hunt down every vintage piece i mean there's everything really, is era correct uh, yeah everything yeah. down to the rare rare motor wheel flies to everything for the moroso first issue hood and it's got the business card still underneath the hood they, they glass yeah. them in and it's got the original arrowhead logo which is you know he says whatever you do don't lose that business card thing so yeah so yeah but we traveled all over to get parts for this thing uh sourced the hood in delaware road trip you know yeah you, 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 there was a lot of extra time put in this car to make it what he wanted. Well, and also, I know you're here at some of our other events trying to find parts and oh, stuff yeah. like that, too. I know you're here at Spring yeah. and Fall all the time. And people don't parts. realize that when the shop door closes, you know, then I'm on the oh, computer yeah. and you're looking and you're, you're trying to find that rare piece. Or you're, yeah. You know, sometimes you're you on drive, Facebook and you, get, or, you know, you yeah. load the truck up with cool stuff. Other times you could have taken the little Subaru wagon because you'll get nothing. And, yeah. and, and that, like the award when you find that rare yeah. piece, that one thing you've been looking for forever. It's just, it's a yeah. great feeling when you actually find everything you're looking for. And but the car turned out amazing. Cool. Yeah, obviously with Brian being the one that did it. And Brian also restored this car as well. So both. The cars I have here were both done by Brian. And cool. We Let's actually talk debuted this, one. this car, Carlisle, about, I'm going to say 16 years ago. Yeah. So it's been done a while and it still looks fantastic. And the neat thing about this car is, it, in my opinion, it may be the highest optioned and maybe prettiest of, it is all, the, of the, <laughs> all of those cars. My opinion, and it's not just because I own the car, but I think this is the coolest Copo Camaro on the planet. Oh, it is. of the options, and not only that, it's original panel car, it was never a rusty car, it's an original drivetrain car, but the options, like there's, out of the Copo Camaro's built, rally sport cars are super rare. They claim there was only 55, 58 of them ever built, and there's maybe 28 to 30 of them that are in existence, but, Nothing is cooler than a Copo Camaro, but a Copo Camaro with options loaded, it's just, it's a dream it, come true. It is yeah, like the holy grail, because they all tell say, it's triple black. What's triple black mean to most people? Well, the triple black is black King. model top, black interior, black exterior. This car, again, with the Rally Sport, the VE3 Endora bumper, which is really great. It has the Copo, it has the uh, spoiler package, so it's got the D80 front and rear spoilers, the Lux Hound's tooth interior, a rosewood steering wheel, I mean, when they optioned this car up, they optioned it right. And uh, this car was sold new at Frost Chevrolet in Ohio. And nice thing about this car, there was two brothers that bought, one brother brought this car, the other brother bought the one beside it. And this is the first time in probably what, since 70 something, 72? Yeah, 70, 72. That these two cars, we tried to do it before, but COVID screwed yeah, everything yeah. up. Yeah, COVID messed it to up. get these yeah. two cars yeah. together for the first time in years, and uh, that brings us to the next car, which is Jeff's car, and it's this Rally Green uh, Copa. And this car is pretty special because not only is it a style trim Copa, which you don't see a lot of with the fender striping and all the bright work, but it's an original paint car. And so it's, Jeff will tell us that this was brought, yeah, Jeff, you want to, see, you could talk about your car better than I can, but, but uh, he, we, we were lucky enough to get him. I, I met up with him at the uh, uh, Power Piston Show 
and I said, hey, how about bringing that car to Carlisle for us? And he said, absolutely. So here we are today, and we're really pleased to have these two cars together because it's to me it's pretty special to have the two brothers that bought two cars from Prost Chevrolet side by side. First time since 1970. Since seven. Been together. Yeah, so that's a long ways. And tell us more about it, I mean, as far as originality is like epic on this car. Um, I've known about the car since 72, had the first chance to buy it in 74. Uh, I was 16 then, it took 11 more years to finally get it. Uh, but it's been well preserved. Uh, original paint, original interior, original drivetrain. The only thing that's been restored on is the engine compartment. Uh, it was road hard and put away wet. Mm -hmm. was the best way As most of them were. That's, yeah. that's what they were born. That's what they were born to do. Yeah, and uh, I've just tried to baby it all these years. After that, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it's it's a great car. And for me, as a restoration person, these are the learning curve car. These are the ones you really learn from. And you know, we looked at this car, photographed this car, and it's neat. You look at the pinstriping, how the factory did it. You can actually see where the pinstriping actually kissed the fender extension. Oh, that's Restoration cool. Restoration guys don't normally do that. They're going to yeah. end it you know, like perfectly. And you can see how they they shortcut them here and start up again. And the unique thing about these cars, like fingerprints, they were done by hand, so Correct. they're unique as well. So you'll see maybe the left hand side guy was better than the right hand side guy, <laughs> or the you know something like that. So you'll see a lot of that. Uh, in these cars when you get to look at the good originals. And that's kind of fun to me to see a good car, that this this original, and again, a great learning tool for the restorations. So, um, Yeah, really it's great to see both of them side by side because yeah. you can definitely see restored yes. example versus... Restored example versus non-restored example. And, and uh, But like I said, these are the great cars to learn from and um, can never say never on restoration. As soon as you think you have ever seen everything, then you yeah. see something you never never saw before. And again, these are hand built pretty fast, rapidly. They came out the assembly line pretty at a pretty fast rate. So cool. You know, they didn't have time to be show cars. They were building production line cars. So anyway, this brings us to our next uh, next Camaro here. Van brought this car from. This was at Sydney Museum. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a unique, this is a really unique, it's an L89, which is an L78, so it's a saw lifter uh, 396, 375, with the L89 option, which is aluminum head, uh, and it's a convertible. So you really got a lot of rarity here. Again, he has a, a VE3 and door bumper. Looking around this showroom, you'd think they all have that, but there, we really see it, but we have about Correct. four or five examples in here with the door bumper. And this car is really pretty with the fathom green and the white interior and the white top. It's striking. And uh, Van, you want to tell us a little bit more about Please. it? Scoot a little closer. Uh, actually, I haven't learned any more from you. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But uh, yeah, it was, it's a really neat car to see. You rarely see L89s, and it's, uh, it's, it's unusual to actually see it. It has these sport wheels on it, which are only on the earliest of the early cars. Uh, they, they, for some reason, and they're a beautiful wheel, but Camaros didn't use it after uh, like November. No. They just kind of got rid of that wheel. I don't know why. Maybe because of Super Sport, uh, the Chevelles and Novas. I don't know why, but Camaro got away from that wheel except for the early cars. Or it cost them two cents more when they built it. Could have cost two cents more when they built it. Some penny silly pusher like that. was, yeah. But uh, yeah, they just didn't use them after a certain point. But uh, this car is, is a really nice example of one of those cars and uh, just a pretty car. Cool. It's a really, really pretty car. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more that it's an opposite of what we think, because you know how difficult it is to get information from GM. It looks like it's an executive car because it's an early build, and it has several features that are typically executive would want. Number one, the air conditioning at that particular time. And uh, other, other things, but to the point that he was making earlier about how fast they came out off the assembly line, I was talking to, this was at another event, and they had people from Norwood that actually worked on the, uh, at the plant. And I was talking to them about the difficulty that I have sometimes pushing up the, the bonnet here, and that would kind of stick. And he was laughing at me, and I said, he said to me, to your point, he says, let me tell you how we used to take care of that. You guys right now, you don't even really touch the car, it's so, you know, so perfect. Well, I used to take a rubber mat while I was coming down the and I'd pound that, boom, 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 to get it straightened out. 
and you listen to these guys, and that's what's so I love about the Camaros. So many personal experiences at the plant, even the politics between the two plants that were going on. Right. Yeah, versus it, Norwood or Van Nuys. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's yeah all absolutely. About how many came off the assembly line and how quickly they could do that. This is no rub against the, the Van Nuys cars, but yeah. the Van Nuys cars we've done versus Norwood cars. I always felt the quality was a little bit better on Norwood, so I don't know. They, you, there's, and there's differences. The Norwoods, yeah. the trunk spatter paint in a, in a Los Angeles built Van Nuys cart, different than the ones that they did in Ohio. So there's little things that we see in a little p p signatures of, of the two different plants. And but, it's a competition between. That's yeah, a spirit sure it was. competition yeah. between. And that's what our car guys are all about. That's why they take this car and, all right, now we're going to do this to it, we're going to do that to it, and it becomes a missing contest. Yeah. Awesome. So, but anyway, we're Thanks. really happy to have this car here today. Thanks, Ben. Now uh, this is uh, this is uh, Justin. this is Justin's. Yep. You're gonna be on a. Uh, all right. All right. Yep. This is uh, this is my friend Justin. He's from my area, actually. Actually, my daughter lives in the same town that he lives in. Uh, called me, young guy in the hobby, which we like to see. Uh, and uh, this is his 396, 375 horse Camaro. Uh, he kind of went with the day two theme, which is super popular these days. So it has the Mickey Thompson valve covers and the uh, torque thrust wheels and some of those upgrades that like everybody did instantly when they owned these cars. But very few of them remain stock. This is a striking car. Again, another Endura bumper car with and the rally green paint is like one of those flash colors in that day. It's really a, a, a dynamic color. Chevrolet didn't have a whole lot of those, in my opinion. They had the orange and the rally green, and possibly Daytona. Not like Chrysler that had all those crazy pinks and purples and all those. But this, in, in the Chevrolet world, in my eye, is probably the Sought after. high impact yeah. color of their, you know. Chevrolet was kind of pulled back a little bit on the color. Well, and that's why they brought it back in the fifth gen, too. Yeah, so it became popular, you yeah. know. But do uh, you want to say a little bit about your car? And, um, and tell yeah, us? Uh, car is an original Arizona car. Um, still has the original deal, t dealer tag on it from uh, Winslow, Arizona. It was purchased at uh, Tyrell Chevrolet out there. Okay. Um, the original owner used to drag race the car. Actually, the name was that he had uh, painted on the quarter panel was El Gringo. Um, raced underneath that name for a while, 60s, late in the, the 70s. Um, typical guy, blew the motor up. One of those, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. The guy that I purchased the car from actually finally was able to purchase it off the owner. Restored the car, original traction bar still on the on the car, and, uh, and he had the torque press. That's kind of what made me go with keeping up the day two theme. You know, the Excel wires, the Mickey Thompson valve covers, little things like that. White Hurst shift ball, things like no, nothing too crazy. Um, did a couple things with this winter, new dash harness. Um, kind of restored the wood grain in the car and stuff like that. It was original wood grain. Um, other than that, just been a fun car to drive, take the car show. Cool. That's what it's all about. We got to get the cars out yeah. there for yeah. the public to see. That's, so. you know, I, I like, that's, you know, there's a, there's a thing I saw on Facebook a long time ago, a couple years ago, it said, you know, why do you drive that car still in the time? Because I was that little kid that saw that car driving, and that was me. Remember, my father-in-law has a 70 Chevelle that he's, you know, when I was young, he's still driving now, stuff like that. So I remember seeing those cars and just, you know, want to put them out there and that's the cool them. thing about the hobby everybody's got a car story so yes, yes. it's fun to see in my opinion a younger guy like appreciating the 60s cars not that there's nothing wrong with an sti and all that no, stuff no. but I, it's it, nice to see you know some and problem with the hobby if there's a problem is these cars have gotten so expensive yes. and it, it, it outprices a lot of the younger guys that have enthusiasm for them Correct, but then we look over in Building T, and yeah. there's a lot of third gens, which are yeah. just now coming on the market. Well, that's the thing. And yeah. you can get in the hobby at an entry level in that. Heck, I saw a C4 in the car corral earlier today. That's four grand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can get a Corvette for four grand. Yeah, so. it's hard to believe, right? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, I had late models. I had two 2000 Camaros, a 26 Camaro SS. I said, you know what, I've always wanted one. It's always been that iconic car. And I just, you know, I had to pull the trigger and just get it and stuff like that. But it is, it is, it's a, it's a great hobby to be a part of. Cool. Well, we're really glad that you brought it. Uh, I reached out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, yeah I, I was, like my brother said, he goes, it was, whoever the thought, you know, just messaged you guys on Facebook and would have 
you know, finally got to be here, walked yeah. through the showroom a hundred times, and it's I'm honored to be here. No, that was so, really, really great when he when he reached out and asked me about bringing the car. I was like, absolutely, yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. you bring it. Yeah, in. I sent him a message, a couple pictures, and he said, you call me at this number. Called, and I think we talked for about 45 minutes. Yeah, and he's not far from you. He's from no. Latrobe, so yeah, yeah that's and then we just get to talk. Like he said, his daughter lives not too far from me and stuff like that. So it's a small world, but. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. No, it's really nice. And and I was posting pictures on my Facebook page. Super I saw that, yep. yep. And his car got more attention than I think anybody else's. It was just blew up. That's like, awesome. It was, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it's, it's my, like, actually, wow. like, one of my friends is like, he's like, you, you realize, like, oh, I'm like, no, I, at work I can't have my phone on and stuff like that. I turn my phone, I'm like, holy crap. And it's just, <laughs> I think part of it is, like he said, it's, it's one of the few GM colors that is that pop color. Yeah. It's not like, you know, like you said, Chrysler had the Plum Crazy and the Panther, or the Pink Panther and all that stuff. It's just the thing that's part of it goes to. And that's one of the colors that drew me, the thing that drew me to this car was that color. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a super awesome car, and I'm glad Thanks. you brought it. I'm glad Appreciate to be here. It. Thank you very much. All righty. So I'm going to go check out Dale's car across the way. Let's do that next. All right, we got this is a real in my opinion real special car i mean this is the first of the z28s 1967. um to those that don't know kind of the interesting thing about 67 that there's no verbiage on the side of the car whatsoever it doesn't say z28 anywhere the only giveaway were the stripes and um, that was it so 67 is kind of the, the you know the very very first of the z28 i love 67s i think they're the raw of the bunch you know, they, they really have their, yeah. I think they're in some ways even a better car than, the, there's there's things that are made into these cars that they, and these were cheap enough, but they kind of got, you know, less and less quality pieces as they went down the line. But the 67 here with the Rally Sport and the beautiful Marina Blue, right? This is Marina Blue. And the Cal Plenum and the factory uh, headers in there, which people, hey, why are those headers blue? Well, that's just, <laughs> That's how they were. They, they used that blue, which really stands out against that uh, orange block. I, I think it's just a, a really great look, and the Cal Planum really is, adds to that that race factor. And what that would do would take the cool air from the, the the vents at the back at the Cal and use that to help yeah. help get the car before the Cal the, the uh, Cal induction hood, the ZL2 hood. But Dale, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yeah, this? Yeah, this is a customer's car. I'm doing a restoration for us. Uh, this customer, a 69Z, I'm restoring for him. This car here, he purchased uh, about eight months ago, and this car, kind of a neat car, it was restored about 20 years ago. Larry, Larry Christensen restored it, and Larry's a legends judge, so he, he was, is. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he's Todd, Todd, the current um, GM performance. Yeah, exactly. So heads, yeah, so, uh, father. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so Larry restored his car about 20 years ago. So the car has been kept pretty clean. It's st it still shows very well. Actually, this car was here being judged. Yes. And this built same exact building, Long but it sat right there. Exactly. Yeah. See, you got good memory. <laughs> yeah. So this so. car is a legends car. Uh, it's held up well. And this car. Uh, my customer was lucky enough to, to get it. He had opportunity to buy it. He bought it, so he loves it. <laughs> right. Cool. You know, it's, he's a, he's a Camaro guy, and he loves he loves '67 Z's. And uh, on a side note, Dale and Brad McAdam over here, friends of mine for a long time, and they finally got around. It's been talked for years, but they <laughs> they put together a judging manual that they actually are using now. We got it yeah, we saw and, it. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of now on paper so guys can buy that that uh, manual and use it as a guideline and with every manual you're always going to have upgrades and things exactly. that you know so it'll be an ongoing process for these guys they'll exactly. have amendments to this and amendments we've to that we've already got amendments yeah, already. yeah. yeah. this is yep. the way it goes because yeah. as soon as you think you've seen it all something else here comes up. something else that you didn't expect to see and it, it becomes now you know right. in different ways different vendors different things that they did I mean, we restored some cars that had uh, one in particular. It was a ninth-month car with a January transmission. No, if with protective plates, so you knew it was legit to the yeah, car. Yeah. But if that car was missing the tranny and you didn't have the paperwork, you'd have a hard time never convincing somebody. I would never source a well, January no, tranny. You, no, you wouldn't you would miss say, it. Two months, maybe yeah, three. You, somebody say you're crazy. So that's but when yeah. it uh, that's yeah. when it becomes you know interesting because right. that kind of rewrites some of the things that you would look for. Right. If the transmission date be like 
a January and a September? I don't yeah, think. It's kind of too far. Have, yeah, it's too far, but you have to yeah. also remember, they were wrapping up 69 Camaro production, a whole new body style for 70. Oh, so yeah. there's got to be parts they're just using up that's old inventory. Well, yeah, like, you know, that's a good point. They, they wanted to get these guys yeah, out they're of not there. Gonna, yeah. And, they, and they, this is a one, you know, 69 was a one-year deal. They're going to use up stuff. You know, that's and what they we do. We have a seminar here coming up at 2 o'clock about these cars in particular. And I actually have one of the assembly line workers from Norwood oh, here to cool. discuss some of this stuff. Yeah, he was just walking around behind yeah, us. Yeah, so. exactly. So, so good. when we do the seminar, well, I'll have him jump in and talk about right. how the cars, how we perceived they were built, but how they were really built, exactly. which is like a lot different than you think. Right, you know? right. But uh, this blue on blue is striking. Yeah, this is a very nice car, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And we're doing a 67, 68 manual too. We'll be in yeah. the fall. We'll be out with that. It's not a, it's not a, an easy task to put those together. No. Because you're always going to have that guy that's not, oh, that's yeah. not right. Oh, they don't know what they're talking yeah. about, you know. Yeah. But that's that's just the nature of the hobby. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, you know, 67s. I think I always think of the raw car. I think they're the nicest. I, I like them. I, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. And they didn't use. There were no spoilers in 67. There might be a case real, real late where they did a like. You know, or like a Copos type yeah. design element, but yeah, these cars are just really special in my and like, opinion. And like Brian said, a lot of people walk by this car and they don't really know it's a Z. Yeah, because Correct. it doesn't scream. Really doesn't have the, it doesn't scream Z and it doesn't have the, you know, the, the badging. Right. Yeah. But you, you know, then they'll look at the stripes and they'll say, wait a minute, something's going on. Yeah, here. something's up there. Yeah. Something's yeah. right. Something's going on. Okay. So, which brings us to our next car, which is an almost iconic, recognizable '69 Z28 <laughs> that it has no. Yeah, everybody knows what a '69 Z28 exactly. is. So we'll go over here. Well, what we have here, if we still go, is 69 Z28, and I think this is like the iconic image of what 69 Z28s are. Again, they use the same strike package, but uh, you know, they introduced uh, the ZL2 cow induction hood, and uh, that's, that's an iconic hood at this point. Like, everybody uses it. Even the Ford boys. We use, do, <laughs> we do. You use the cow induction hood at this point in time. But that was all part of... of of a, a additional uh, option, it, all all Z's did not get that. Uh, some people believe they all did, but they, they didn't. And uh, they all had 15-inch rally wheels, disc brakes. You could get four-wheel disc brake, but it didn't happen all the time. Very few cars got that. They were always always four-speed cars, and uh, they just have that look, you know. And Z28s could be had very very cheaply back when. I mean, if you didn't order anything real fancy. You could get a Z under three thousand dollars. Now my mother had this exact spec. Yeah. So. so you see in these old advertisements, sixty nine Z twenty eight, twenty seven hundred, twenty eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Know. And now this, those were a real basic Z twenty eight. And this one here is is kind of a basic Z twenty eight. This is called an X X seventy seven style trim. So it has no external trim. It has no wheel lip moldings, no gutter moldings. They did opt for the vinyl top, and they did opt for the D80 spoiler package, which looks great on these cars. But that you didn't have to have the D, D80 spoilers in the early cars. Later on, they basically put it into the sticker price of the car. But this is a basic black standard interior. So it's, it's the base black interior, and he's got that beautiful wood wheel and tilt wheel. Uh, the Rosewood wheels, another iconic uh, GM thing for GM guys that are out there. But uh, we uh, had the opportunity to uh, work on this car, and uh, he was getting it ready for judging, had been through judging before, had some things he wanted to correct, so he reached out to us and we got the car and kind of got a, you know, what we think is a little bit better for him. And uh, you'd like to say a little bit about the car yourself? Yes, um, I purchased the car in 2018 after many years of um, searching for a correct original uh, 69Z28. Um, and it just so happens I'm a silver person and the car happens to be Cortez Silver, so it all it checked all the boxes for me. Um, the car has been to the Camaro Nationals. It has achieved a legend status. And I have to say thanks to Brian and Joe um, to get the car at the level that you see it uh, today. But uh, it was a pleasure to work with. And this was an Arizona car. That is so it's an original sheet metal car, like the Yanka Deuce back there. And, and a, like a few of these cars in here that are original sheet metal. And, and when you look at original sheet metal cars too, they have, you could see the quality control, the way things were welded. You know, there's differences on a restored car, which everybody tends to make perfect. 
in the original cars, you see those little flaws that were built into the cars. So that's kind of neat to get original sheet metal cars in. And one time we restored a Camaro and had one original quarter panel on and we had to have one replaced. We made them look identical and the expert looked at the car and said, which one was replaced? Of course, they picked the side it was original. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, so if you know what to look for, it gets kind of kind of interesting. But, uh, anyhow, this is a great example. Uh, we posted this car coming to the, the show on our Facebook page. Well, there are people raving, best color combo ever. <laughs> Done. Done. And there's no other thing to talk Absolutely. about. Absolutely, yep. Which everybody has an opinion on colors. But right. Cortez Silver with the black hat and the black stripes is pretty striking as well. But, yeah, a lot of people love the Cortez Silver. And uh, so we're really pleased that he brought it down for us this weekend. And, cool. Um, so we're going to move over to our next car. Yeah, let's check out which, Don's car. Thank you. Yeah. Now this is uh, Don. Oh, he looks like he's busy explaining this car yeah, to Yeah, this guy's already busy talking about his car. But this is a, an unusual 69 Copo. Um, you want to tell us a little bit more about this Garnet Red? It's, it's Garnet Red. It's, not, it's Rally Red now, but it was a Garnet Red car with black interior, automatic out of Van Nuys, California, and went from Van Nuys, California to Nevada. Uh, and that's what we're trying to prove that this is one of the one of six or seven known copos out of Van Nuys, California, which that's why I'm here here today. I, I got a gracious invitation from, from Brian. Uh, it's all numbers matching car. It's the the block is January 69. The heads are February 1969, <clears throat> so uh, it's got double stamping on on the motor for the VIN and and uh, oil by the oil filter, and the transmission has the has the same VIN VIN number on. It. So I pulled it out of a barn six months ago. I've been working on it for the last couple of months to to get it to get it here uh, to see if it's it's true copo. Uh, to be in the field of Copos, it's not. Awesome. Yeah, so it's it's an interesting car. If it pans out, it's, it's definitely, definitely uh, uh, an unusual uh, being built in Van Nuys. And uh, this car also shows it had 97, 37 sports car package. So it had the big rally, 15 by 7 rallies and 140 speedo and the 13, 16th inch sway bar. So uh, an interesting car. Glad he brought it. Next. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, you never know what's going to show up here at the SLS. You just never know. So, Yeah, and 14 years is quite a feat for doing a, a yeah, display. We, and it's always had, popular each year. So Yeah, uh, there was actually one year where they almost nixed the show. It was almost like canceled for a year, and it, it didn't go well. No, it didn't. It definitely <laughs> it did not. It didn't go well. All the fans of the Salt Lifter show were like, what are you doing, you crazy people? What's going on? This yeah. Is, this is the first place I yeah, want to Yeah, and we go. brought it back, so that was yeah, the great part. Yeah, they brought it back within yeah. like a Thank week. You very much. Yeah. You're welcome. So let's check out Jim's car here. Yeah, Jim comes from Ohio with us with his uh, another Copo Camaro. So we're really blessed to have these many Copo Camaros here with us this year. Now, the interesting thing about this car is not only Copo, but it was used as a race car, which most of them were. And he restored the car. You see pictures of it there as a bone stalker. That's how he did it originally out of the gate. And then he came up with a great idea where he went through and they wrapped. They used a wrap to recreate the original war paint that was on the car. So if the day comes where he doesn't want to see it like this anymore, you can take it and he really didn't do any damage to the car. And the thing about super stock, stock, modified production, all those things back in those days, it was really a bolt on car. You know, there really wasn't a whole lot that uh, you could really do that wasn't real exotic. So I always say these guys that do these cars like this, and we've done quite a few, a long afternoon, two week, a long weekend, you can turn it back to stock no problem. Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. know, so I like to see them done like this. I got a sweet spot. I got a you know, soft spot, <laughs> I guess you might yep. say, for these kind of cars. We've restored a couple uh, famous race cars over the years. And... Um, yeah, I had to send this one to you when it applied, yeah, just because exactly. it, was, it was definitely a cool one to yeah, have. So we were really uh, lucky to get this car here today. I heard about it. I didn't get to see it till this week, and I'm really glad he brought it here. But Jim, you could tell us a little bit more about your journey on how you got it and, and why you decided to do it with what you did. Yep. So found it. Uh, guy I used to work with had it. 
15,500 original miles. It had been restored gold and black in the late 70s. Interior still original. Um, didn't have any of the original drivetrain, so I had to source all the correct stuff for that. But uh, once I researched uh, owner history, discovered uh, the guy that drag raced it and put it in this paint scheme, I thought, I really got to do it. I got to do it back to that. Uh, the guy that uh, whose name is on there, his son still drag races today. Awesome. Uh, the guy that painted it in this paint scheme in 1971 drag races with the guy's son. So my goal is to get them to take it back down the track this year, 50 years after his dad first took it down the track. That's so. great. Yep. And like I said, I like this kind of car. This is, in my, my opinion, this is what the Copas were meant to do. And this car did what it was supposed to do. They raced these cars. And, uh, you know, and it's no surprise that he said that a lot of the drivetrain was missing because they Correct. pounded these cars. Yeah. You know, they really did. But Well, they were meant to be beat on, to say the least. Yeah. So. It's like the Thunderbolts. To me, they're like Thunderbolts, the Chevrolet version of the Thunderbolts yeah. and lightweights because those cars were, have purpose built. And uh, I think these cars, this is what they were meant for. Purpose built to go fast and That's have right. fun in. So. And, and a reasonable price. These cars Correct. weren't crazy money. You know, I mean, Back in those days, two hundred dollars was a lot yeah. of jump. I yeah. get that, you know, but you know these cars under four thousand dollars for base Copos, you know, in Yanko you get forty two, forty three. Correct. It's not the performance cars you see out today yeah. that you're six figures to go oh, buy yeah. a decent performance car. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, but uh, you know, very, very happy that Jim was able to bring this again. I appreciate you guys yeah, bringing these cars you here. Guys, uh, hold uh, it's great. And we have six Copos here, so that's kind of neat. And, and the nice thing about it is they're all a little bit different. Correct. You Correct. Know, so we have some real basic Copos, we have some style trim Copos, race car Copos. Kind of got a little bit of everything here for everybody. So, yep. but I'm very excited that this car is here for us today. But uh, yeah, it looks great. And uh, I like the fact that he can, if he wants to, he can take it back to. I can't see him doing it anytime soon because it would be hard to be. The, might be the next, <laughs> next owner can do that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would think. But the too. underside's all factory correct restoration, so yeah. Yeah, it yeah. looks beautiful. It wouldn't beautiful. take much to, to get her back. No. Not to uh, we restored it. a ZL1 a few years ago and basically did the same thing, except he actually painted the door on. You know, all the la labeling was done in paint. He goes, well, oh well. <laughs> you know, I, he wanted to see the brush strokes and the gold, yeah. the gold yeah. leaf and everything. And I said, well, it's all right by me. So. Cool. But uh, yeah, so uh, my opinion, not, no value heard on a car like this. Oh, absolutely you not. Just do it like it was. And no, you're the right. Photos. In a long weekend, take them a Fourth of yeah, July weekend, for example. You could probably take can be a straw poll and find 50-50 people love it like this <laughs> versus long, the one that's beside it or the other way around. Yeah. You know? So let's go check out the one next to it. Right, so. we'll check Thanks, out the Jim. one next to it. Thanks, Jim. Hey, Tom. Hey, this car. This car is, in my opinion, one of the prettiest 69 Copas that I've ever seen. I, right, the black one over there rivals this as far as I think it's, but this is another X11 style trim group car. So it has the uh, fender pinstriping and all the gingerbread that goes with it. It's an indoor bumper car again. Uh, this car was equipped with rally wheels and white wall tires, which people don't, you know, they don't like think white wall tire on a Copa. No, but they, no, that's definitely the not. way they were. You know, a lot of them were that way. Not a lot, but they're out there. We yes. have paperwork on a quite a, a number of the ones that did have the white walls. But this is a black standard interior car, no console, and it has D80 spoilers. But this is a numbers matching car. We recently just refinished the original motor for the car and reinstalled it. The motor was with the car when he got it, but a CE block was built because the original motor had some, uh, some weak spots and so forth in it and no one really even attempted to fix the original motor for whatever reason. Uh, Tom decided, why don't we look and see if we can have it done? So the engine was taken out the Indy cylinder heads, they fixed the engine, our guys at A1 Machine redid the, Joe Zioli and Dave Reed redid the engine, and uh, I think Joe and I put this thing back together about two weeks, three weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, so uh, the car is owned by my good friend Tom Cushmas, Tom has done, been with us for a long time. We've done a lot of, a lot of different projects with Tom. But uh, this, this one here is, I just think, a stunning example of a Copa. It's like a gentleman Copo. Absolutely. You That's know, it has like, a, we're going to put golf clubs in the back and go, go to the country club in this one. You know, so, but um, like most of them, 
you know, this car was beat up. You know, they, they tend to, you know, uh, drag race them and they, you know, they cut shifter tunnels out and do stuff like that. But all the work was put back together. It wasn't, it wasn't rusty or shot like that. It's, you know, it just had basically hot rod stuff done yeah. to it. And all that stuff was kicked out of it. And now it's back to basically as, as best as we can do, like the day would have been delivered. So, but a beautiful hamster car. Tom, do you have anything to add to this? No, no, you pretty much said everything about it. It is dust blue, which is an unusual color for these. You don't see a yeah. lot of dust blue. And I think it's a, a very attractive color. Yeah, I remember what you sent it to me. It was, I was like, oh, that's a yeah. very, very like understated, but classy look. Yeah, and, so. it, and with the trim and the white, it really looks great with the white. It white flows very yeah, nice. Yeah, correct. It flows together really good. We had just, it was last Friday actually, uh, the red Copa behind us that's uh, all jacked up here, and this car was, was is shot for a double feature for Chevy Performers Magazine. Oh, so awesome. it should be coming down the road here. Probably so September, it, October, somewhere. Some, yeah, yeah, I don't know exactly when. Sometimes they come in quicker than you think. Sometimes they're longer true, than you think. True, true. But the, uh, the whole idea was to show two Copas that are basically identical X11 cars, but this one Went with one all, direction? With all the yeah. direction in this car in the bone stock direction. So it was a kind of interesting photo shoot. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing that. So Cool. But uh, yeah, Tommy, I appreciate you bringing this. Tommy always is. He always cars. has stuff. He's yeah. always bringing cool cars. So uh, we appreciate He's always giving you work to do too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, seems Joey, whenever I run into you wherever, you're doing something for him. We so. restored this one about 10, 10 or so years, maybe a little further. Yeah. And, and Tommy keeps them, I mean, it looks like it was done yesterday. It does. Well, other than the engine, it was. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. The engine was about two weeks out, but the rest of the car is, uh, you know, the original uh, that was done done all those years ago. But he keeps his stuff, you know, obviously carfing. Yep. So, but again, thanks for bringing it, mm -hmm. sharing yeah. it with everybody here. Hey, this is Lou Jasper. He was gracious enough to bring his Camaro, I call it a Trans Am car. They lucky race it. Enough. You're lucky enough. Yeah. We met him last year. Phil Phil brought you over. He said, "What do you think if we could bring this car into the SLS?" I'm like, "Yeah. Who do I got to talk to? Me?" I said, "Let's do it. Let's get it in here." So uh, the nice thing about this car is it's not only a great car that he runs hard, but he also has a great cause with this car as well. So if you want to talk a little bit about that, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, the car, it, many of you might realize, this is actually kind of a tribute to the Penske cars that used to race the SCCA back in the late 60s. Um, and normally, it would have Sunoco Camaro back here, but we wanted to make it a little more for us. So we, uh, we decided to generate awareness for a cause that we really care for. So St. Baldrick's Foundation is an organization that raises money for cancer. So we've been doing St. Baldrick's now for about 13 years. Um, and we've had the decal on the car, uh, trying to create awareness I think for about five years now. So we've enjoyed doing that, and uh, you know, we're hoping some folks come out and, and uh, become aware of St. Baldrick's and hopefully contribute. Yeah, we have a little donation jar over here. Mm -hmm. I say, if you don't come through here and at least put a dollar in here, yeah, at least that, because where are you going to see this kind of quality of cars? You know, but I know he's been doing good with the donation jar. I know yeah, I see guys hit absolutely. it pretty heavy heavy hits in here so but we're really grateful to have the car here this weekend yeah and uh see that's kind of how it happens the sls mm -hmm. guys will reach out and say hey i got this thing let's bring it in let's take yeah. a look you know so that's how that's this all happened by like lou just reaching out and i said we got to have it here next year so and this car go. doesn't just sit pretty either you race no, it too no, that's so absolutely right so we race this one regularly and uh we have a lot of fun doing it and we also have you know great opportunities like this to, uh, to show in the solid lifter showroom. So. And he uh, just had a nice big feature in Chevy Performers with it too, yeah, like almost did, the same yep. time as this came to, to us here, so. So the other thing too is, you know, we're giving out magazines. So not only the June issue, which this car was in, but also the July issue as well. Right, So awesome. people can take issues and hopefully leave a donation. Yep, yep, for Thank sure. You, man, I, I'm a firm believer in the magazine. Yeah. I don't like the online stuff. I'm old, <laughs> I get it. But I like that magazine. I like it Absolutely. in my hand. You can hang it, hang it around and look at it. It's always neat to pull out. So I like to support these magazines, guys. Yep. Get out Absolutely. there and support these performance magazines of Chevy, Ford, whatever they might be. Because they're not a big conglomerate. They're out there. They're supporting yeah. the hobby. And we like to see that as yeah, like we, people uh, in the hobby ourselves, right. not only as enthusiasts, but as show promoters. Right. We want to see 
people like Randy Bowling, who's here with Chevy Hardcore, and the group from Chevy Performance and stuff like that, right. out here at the shows because they're not sitting in a corporate office being told, right. hey, this is what I think we should um, cover because this is what a focus group says. Most guys, they're the enthusiasts and they're seeing the cars like we've seen already and going right to gravitating to these cars that are cool. Well, so. Probably one of the biggest disappointments ever was when Muscle Car Review was no longer muscle, Absolutely. you know, and it yeah. went down. And man, there's so many people upset about that. And we had a great relationship with Muscle Car Review. Man, they would come here, promote the Carlisle event and Absolutely. the showroom event. Yep. Great people to work with. Uh, and uh, when that when that magazine fell, I was like, oh man. Yeah. You know, so out of those ashes, some of these things are coming back. But I still think people like that magazine because going, hey, check out my car on the. It's just it's, not. It's the not same, the right? same. To yeah. me, it's just not the same. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, the young people will say, hey, I like the magazine too. Yeah, and absolutely. When they watch this on YouTube or Facebook, yeah. hopefully they'll come out, check out these cars in person instead of just whatever pops up on the internet. Right. So. Yeah. But watch our online video. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, Lou. Tony, you're up. This is a longtime friend of mine, Tony Viano. Tony uh, has Friends. been part of the Soup Sawlifter showroom uh, in other years with his 69 Rally Green Camaro. Yes. And um, every year I have always laugh. They have a luncheon on Saturday they call, they give you, they call it a celebrity pick. So I always think it's funny that they say, you got to go out and find a car like I'm a celebrity pick. but. Last year, didn't even know this was Tony's car. Right. And Joe, my partner, was out there. He goes, man, you got to see this Oldsmobile out here. This thing is so, so nice. And I had to rush to get my sticker on the car. Because usually what happens is the nice ones get taken real fast. Correct. Correct. And we got over there, and it was Tony's car. I'm like, I can't even believe it. You know? Yeah. So what we try to do is when I make a pick like that, we try to invite them to the Solica showroom the following year. You know, so these guys, he was out on the show field last year, he's in the building this year. But this thing is striking. It 66 442. And you want to tell us a little bit more about it? The car is numbers matching. It's one of 2,189 with the tri power setup, which was a one year option. The car also is one of 300 because it's a sports coupe with the tri power, bench seat, four speed car with air. Okay, it, it, it's a rare car by itself. It's completely correct. It's numbers matching. All I, I, I don't know how to talk here, guys. Right. Yeah, ask it, me questions. Yeah. It, I mean, the car a, does all the talking. If you ask it does, me. Right. it does. It's a correct car. Okay. Yeah, it's just a, it's a great looking. You don't and see the sixty six four four two very often. No. And not done to this no. level either. So. No, it's, a striking color combination. I mean, red is always a strong color to begin with, but yes. you know, the trips and the four speed, that's enough for me right there. It, it it's is. all very rare. And I felt honored when he put the tag on my car, because I'd already talked to somebody else who was coming up for a tag. Yeah. Okay. And he said, call him. And they found out it was my car at that point in time. Yeah. And yeah, our celebrity picks are often highly coveted, and once you have a top-level car, yeah. somebody's yeah, trying to put a sticker on it, like yeah. Brian said. So Somebody else was had already talked to me, and then he had already put a sticker on the car and it, with a note that said, call him, and I did. Yeah. And here I am today, guys, it is, I, it is, and I'm honored to be in this cool. room. With it, hey, with we love room. having and you. It so. is, it, I mean, what he said is absolutely true. When you go out there and you talk to that person and ask them a little bit about yes. their car and say, well, here's what I want to do. And you put that sticker on, they get really excited about that. Oh, yeah. It's yes. a real big deal. And, you know, and I enjoy doing it. It's fun to get it out is there fun, and yeah. look around. And, yes. you know, if so many people think of us as Camaro guys, but I like yeah. everything. Oh, I know you do. So it doesn't have to be Camaro. Yeah. You know, so. I know. I see you out here at our other brand X shows. Oh, yeah. We, so. go to, we try to go to all of them. So. Yeah. So I'm one of those guys that have Fords, Mopars, and Chevy, so I can't be pigeonholed. You know? Oh, I know. But That's what I said. This is the Oldsmobile inside the Solid Lifter showroom with Camaros, Novas, big Chevrolets. I am quite the honored. Yes. Okay, I am honored yeah. to be well, here. I appreciate you bringing it in. We appreciate yes. it. The, thing, yeah. the original theme of the Solid Lifter showroom was just a name that I thought was sounded cool, and it's stock. Yeah. You know, and uh, when we reached out to Rick Marker all those years ago, and he's like, you can do this? I'm like, yeah. And we went to uh, the first, they invited me to the celebrity lunch and there's people yep. like Bill Jenkins there, like Correct. celebrity, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know anything, yeah. you know? Yeah. And he was introducing everybody and it, 
And when he got talking about the Sun Lifter show, he talked more about that than any other single thing that day. And I was like, wow, we must have done something well. And I wanted to. And you my, do. And you and do. My original so. plan was we would do a Chevrolet based Sun Lifter showroom. And I was thinking about handing the keys to Pontiac guys, then handing it to Buick guys, Oldsmobile, and then come back like every couple of years, start Chevrolet again. And Rick said, as long as he wants to do this, we're going to have him do this. Yeah, absolutely. So for the longest time, it was Chevrolet. And then we started. Hey, you've rotated in Olds, Pontiac, oh, yeah. throughout had, the years. Yeah, had a lot of you've had events. Camaro yeah. number one yeah. in the building. Yeah, you've had. had and that's yeah. six cylinder. You know, people go like, well, when Saul Lipp to show him, yeah, but you know, we expanded upon, yeah. you know, do you say, oh, an L79 isn't cool enough to be in here? Yeah. So and like and even so in Yankos, well, so exactly. Exactly. even in Yankos, you had the Yanko Corvair yeah. yes. in, the, in yes. the building. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And nobody yeah. thinks of Corvairs yeah. well, from a performance the standpoint. Do. They do, exactly. But, so. uh, no, we were, we're really, like I said, our working relationship is great. Yep. It both goes both ways. Because oh, it does. Carlisle is one of the well, the venues that say, I'll exactly. open the door, and when you're ready to leave, close it, because we we're go. not very needy. Correct. And like I said, I feel honored that I'm right here with these and guys. And we're happy to have you here, and uh, we're, we're me, excited I, your car's in the building. So, so am I. I can't tell you how nervous I am doing this. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. But, it's all uh, good. We appreciate him having it here. And yeah. like I said, just yeah. coincidence that he had this cool car that we zeroed in on. I had no idea he even owned it. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I appreciate yeah. you bringing it, Tony. Yeah, really thanks, Tony. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yep, thank so let's you. go do our last car our last, here. Thanks. Last car in line. For most and it's the boat. This is probably one of my favorite cars in the room this year. It is. This is Don Bach, regardless of what it says down there. It's Don Bach. Yeah, it is. Car. It is, yeah. Don, for the Carlisle faithful, sets up here all the time and sells full size Chevrolet parts. He's really into these. And this car is like a 17,000 mile survivor that he got out of Canada. Original paint car. In my opinion, just a stunning combination. And uh, four speed car. And he just, got, he just got done. He brought it here all wet and dirty because he was out on some kind of tour with it for the, yeah. some club. So he, he drove it here. And uh, it's it, with the mag wheel covers, I, I think are gorgeous. The red line tires, that yellow. I mean, it just really pops. And that's what it's all about too is driving the cars yeah. yes there are some garage queens in here but oh, yeah, there's a lot of drivers in here as well yeah, so and this car here he does use and uh he's very proud of this car you know he it, it took him a long time to get this absolutely and it came out of canada and that's that's needed as well because canadian the canadians they they had great records correct so you can go through their their services and get you know all the information on the car he knew the car pursued it for a long long time and you know this is a special car if the guy specializes in Impalas. Yeah. And this is his personal Impala. I mean, this car is a very coveted car. I think it's just a stunning automobile. And the 68s are, are gorgeous in their own right, but there's the louvers and the special domed hood. Yeah. I mean, these, these hoods, if you have to source a hood for one of these cars, good you luck. You ain't finding it, yeah. Good luck, because uh, even a rough one would command a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. You know, so a really And the guy one. who's going to have it is going to be Don. If you, so. well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, he has he has the stuff, but uh, he's not here at the moment to talk about the car. He's out probably looking for more Impala parts, is my guess. And rightfully so. Yeah. So, so there's but, a great swap meet out there to find parts. Yeah, at, exactly. So. And, and that's the thing about Carlisle is a little bit of everything for everybody. Yeah. But uh, no, it's uh, I'm really glad you took the opportunity to talk about the Solid to Show yeah. and uh, give us an opportunity to tell us what we're all about in here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and check uh, out Supercar Workshop and Supercar mm -hmm. Restoration. Yeah. They're out in Western PA. Yep. Supercar Restorations are from Climber PA, Climber and then PA, you guys are from, from Latrobe. So. Yeah, we work hand in hand. So. Yeah, and I see you at a bunch of different shows throughout the year, whether it's McCacken, right. whether it's Pittsburgh World of Wheels. Yeah, we're, we're kind of yeah. friends. We try to you know do some things every year. Yeah, and but I know you're talking baby. about doing a big one for next year for the 15th. So. Yeah, there's some them talk about that yeah you got some really cool stuff yeah i, I bet planned yeah so. we had a couple years ago we had a big deal we were the builder of the year for the pittsburgh world of wheels car shows yep. we had a big display there and, i remember uh, that that was a great display yeah, that was a pretty neat display a lot of work it was plus I, it's not a great time of year no january is not the best no, time of year to be driving across pittsburgh yeah. so so but this is a lot easier yeah to come well it's here. june so i'd rather drive here the, the mileage that it takes to get here to go to pittsburgh once in the winter it correct correct but, uh, so, but anyway. yeah, thank you, Brian. Thank and you. For more information on Supercar Workshop, Solid Lifter Showroom, and Supercar Restoration, and, and the group. events, because we all come up together. Yeah, www.carliveevents.com. <laughs> Gates open at 7 a.m. daily.